Griffin Update is our student-produced digital magazine show bringing you news, sports, and information from Missouri Western State University and the surrounding region. During each program, we will present an in-depth look at the people, places, and events that make Missouri Western and the Northwest region of Missouri a great place to call home. Hello, and welcome to Griffin Update. I'm Mackenzie Bose. And I'm Morgan Doyle. On today's show, we'll be looking into how you can get a job here on campus. We'll also venture behind the scenes at an open mic for poetry written by women. And new this semester is the Five Minute Griffin Newscast. This new feature brings you news from our partners at the Griffin Newspaper. And last but not least, Bailey Ketchum will join us with her sports report. Hey Morgan, I was curious, do you have a job? Actually, let me be more specific. Do you have a job here on campus? I do not, but I was actually wondering how I could go about getting one. I had the same idea. I think it would be much easier to get a job here on campus than in town. Reporter Jessica Kopp can give us all the details on how to do just that. Looking for a job can be intimidating but also rewarding. Western Security Development Center is here to help with the task in many different ways. We, um, they can, we can help them over the phone, we can help them over email, we can also schedule appointments and help them on the computers over there. They can come in and schedule an appointment or they, they can schedule an appointment through uh, email and phone and then they can come through on that day and we'll help them on um, other computers they sign in and we'll sit down with them and help them with their resumes or cover letters. The center also helps students to find part-time jobs. We're looking for um, on-campus jobs. Most of them are freshmen and most of the students that come in for resume help are also doing the resumes for University 101. But students looking for full-time jobs find support as well. Most of the time it's older students, more juniors and upperclassmen. They come in looking for uh, off-campus jobs. Students often need help with their resumes and the mentors see the same mistakes over and over again. One of the main things I see is instead of bullet pointing job descriptions or other information, students will just list out like in a big sentence or stuff. So I think the main thing is to make it neat and easy to read rather than the employer kind of like searching through it and just being kind of confused because all the information is just jumbled up. So. Students who want to create a new resume can use the resume templates on the Griffins for Hire portal, formerly known as Griffin Link. The portal can be accessed through Gold Link and offers many features. We kind of revamped like the whole outlook of it. We changed the like the headers on all the websites. We changed the name. We changed a little bit of our policies, um, the way we do things. So the Griffins for Hire website, a student gets an active profile directly after 24 hours after registering for classes and um, they will submit their resume into the portal and each student gets one revision and then after that one revision they're either approved or they can schedule a one-on-one -on -one revision with us and then once that resume is done and approved then they can start applying for on and off campus jobs through our site. Students can search for jobs and we find a search to find a job that fits their needs. The portal also offers other application materials, samples and resources for off and on-campus employment. The portal has advantages for employers as well. It's easy to use mm -hmm. so they can connect with um, current students and recent alumni. Just do our site like quick and easy. It allows the student and alumni um, to find like a, a job right upon graduation and they can hopefully stay with that company long term. I mean, it's a nice and easy way to find new candidates for the position, so. The center also organizes job fairs that allow students to meet employers in person. Um, yeah, we organize a lot of career fairs and recently we've changed them to major specific mm -hmm. so employers and students can connect easier um, rather than going to a job fair and having like many different majors in many different fields, we can combine like uh, major specific to make it much easier. This was Jessica Cobb. Well, I know where I'm going to find my next job. Yeah, same. For more information on getting a job here on campus, visit the Career Development Center homepage. Now, I'm sure that every college student has gone through the phase with our parents sending us off to college with a whole bunch of snacks and food and thinking that it would last all semester. Yeah, the food my parents sent me lasted about a week. That's what I thought. But the Missouri Western Campus Cupboard can help us out with this. Reporter Jesse Johnson has the story. Griffins are always looking for a way to give back, not only to the students, but also the community. 
Here at Missouri Western, the campus cupboard is doing just that. Dr. Elise Hepworth, the director of choral activities and vocal music education, was the brains behind this operation when implementing the cupboard on campus. But I came from another school, a, a school of similar size and similar student population in Northeast Nebraska, and they started a food pantry. I thought that that was something that we, as a university, need to need to support our students. I mean, it's their home away from home. The cupboard is open twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 2 to 4 p.m. Students are allowed to visit twice a month and fill up two bags during each visit. Student volunteers work those hours monitoring how many people use the cupboard and how many pounds of food get taken out. Student Eli Dodge, a member of SGA and Phi Delta Theta, found that the cupboard has been a welcomed addition to the Missouri Western campus. Um, for a couple organizations, I've done community service events to raise food for it. Um, I've done an, an event with SGA as well as Phi Delta Theta to um, raise money for campus cupboards. So it's a pretty helpful resource on campus for a lot of people. Student Alexandria Null, a volunteer for the cupboard, recognizes the importance of the cupboard for college students who may not have the means to feed themselves. Students, if you don't have food, you can't learn as well because you're constantly focused on how hungry you are instead. So it's important for those who can't afford to have food to have something. The Campus Cupboard also partners with the organization Second Harvest. Second Harvest is a food bank that helps people all across the country. In Buchanan County, the number of people with food insecurities reaches almost 15,000. The whole goal of the Campus Cupboard is to help everyone. The campus cupboard represents community, and right now we celebrate individualism. Like right now we're so about being different and being individual and being and celebrating me and we're always thinking about how can I get more and how is this going to benefit me and the campus cupboard is a chance to celebrate others. The campus cupboard is always looking for more volunteers to help out. Anyone interested can contact Dr. Hepworth for more details. For Griffin Update, I'm Jesse Johnson. That reminds me, I've got to go grocery shopping. For more information or if you need to fill your empty cupboards, visit the Campus Cupboard in Blum 214, Tuesday and Thursday from 2 to 4. And make sure you bring your student ID. And speaking of groceries, I need to go make my grocery list. We'll be right back with more Griffin Update after this. A leading problem I faced is a misunderstanding on the part of students of the importance of academic advising. They miss appointments. They don't make appointments. But what's most disappointing is when they come unprepared. <laughs> Give me a student with a plan in their head, or better yet, on paper. We could talk about their interests, not just about their classes. We could discuss internships, classwork, grad programs. It would open the door to what advising is truly about. Can I help you? But instead, they come to me in a panic when they need to That's register because... I need to talk to you. I was trying to register for my classes, but it wouldn't let me do it because I need my pen, and I haven't had time to set up an advising, so I don't even know what classes I need to take, so I just signed up for a bunch of random ones, and I'm going to drop them later. So can I have my pen real fast? Because I'm still locked into a computer in the lab. Am I interrupting? Take ownership of your education. Make the most of your advisement by being proactive, punctual, and prepared. You'll open the door to more personalized attention and avoid costly setbacks. It's never too soon to begin planning your next steps at Missouri Western. Welcome back. Morgan, what type of music do you like? Um, I listen to country mostly, but just about anything. Did you know that St. Joe is known for its local music? There are a lot of really cool bands here in town. Reporter Tommy Marshall gives us an inside scoop on one of our local favorites. St. Joseph has a bigger music scene than most people like to give it credit for. Go downtown on any Friday or Saturday night and you will find a wide variety of bands entertaining local audiences. While you'll find a large number of rock bands, one genre that you don't see much of is folk music. It's a genre that doesn't get as much recognition within the St. Joseph music scene. However, folk band The Center State are looking to change that. Jeremy was more or less a solo act there for a while. Mm -hmm. He had a bunch of songs that he had written. Yeah, we wrote those songs. Gotcha. And, and uh, he wanted a violinist, and Mackenzie was basically the only violinist that he knew. Around that same time, Mackenzie and I got engaged, and 
both of us not wanting it to be weird, just the two of them hanging out practicing. Mm -hmm. I came along as the third wheel to kind of sit in the corner and twiddle my thumbs. Fred, and, and I approached him. I yeah. said, so, dude, we got to be friends because I want to still hang out with your wife and stuff <laughs> whenever she's your wife. Very awkward. Yeah. And I said, so what do you play? He's like, I play a little guitar. I said, so you can play bass. He's like, I've never played bass. You're going to play bass. And he's like, okay. That, <laughs> that's kind of how the conversation happened. From there, the band wasted no time getting in the studio and booking shows. We actually do try to think through, okay, how's the flow? You know, we don't want to put like all the fast songs at the beginning and all the slow songs at the end. We want to uh, have a good balance to it. I don't want to sing all the songs that I sing and then have Brad sing all the songs that he, he sings, mm -hmm. you know. And so we're mindful of those things and then we try to transition well. And while the group delivers what you would want from them in a live show, when it comes to writing songs, Jeremy is the one that takes the forefront. It's over time and it's methodical. Like I will take moments and with notes and I'll just type out ideas of songs like wake up at 11 o'clock at night, you know, or 12 and like song lyrics are going through my head or whatever and I'm just like, okay, I'll, I'll type this out. You have I don't to know. get it out I have to get it out it. because I won't go to sleep. When their songs are written and good to go, the band headed to the studio to record, with their full-length album, Close Enough to Miss, being the result in their first release. However, the process was far from easy. The album took a year and a half to record. Songs were tracked in the early hours of the morning due to the band's busy schedules. It's the band's first full-length, and while it is their first full-length, it's not their first recording. They released the Center State EP, earlier. From there, the band has been promoting this record with constant gigging as they prepare their next batch of tunes to give to the world. With over 1,000 likes on Facebook and shows lining up, the band shows no signs of slowing down. So if you enjoy yourself some folk music, you don't want to pass these guys up. I'm Tommy Marshall, reporting. I love their music. I'm going to have to check them out sometime. Have you ever noticed how beautiful St. Joe is? Honestly, I haven't really gotten off campus. No way. Well, reporter Justin Gomez can show you where to go better than I can explain. This is a Ryan Little production. Wow, I never even realized. I definitely need to get off campus more. But after this quick break, we'll bring you our new feature, the Griffin Newscast. At Missouri Western, it's on us. It's on us, all of us, to take responsibility and stop sexual assault. To create a campus environment where everyone is safe and feels safe. To realize that ending sexual assault is not an individual endeavor. But a collective effort. To understand that it affects not only students, but faculty and staff members alike. At Missouri Western, we take action. It's on us to look out for each other and not look the other way. We step up and say something. We support survivors. We are going to be a part of the solution and not the problem. It's on us to intervene and take responsibility. So take action because we can and will make a difference. At Missouri Western, it's on us to, to put, put an, an end, end to sexual, sexual assault. assault. Begin by taking the pledge at itsonus.org. The Griffin Newscast. Your news in five minutes from the Griffin News. The definition of convergence. This is the Griffin Newscast with Mary Beth Rosenauer. Welcome to the Griffin Newscast. 
Over the next few minutes, we're going to give you a brief look at the stories making headlines on the campus of Missouri Western. On September 12th, Missouri Western welcomed the son of the late Martin Luther King Jr. to Looney Arena for the 24th annual R. Dan Bulware Convocation on Critical Issues. Students, faculty, community members, and local high schoolers turned out to hear Martin Luther King III's speech on embracing the ideals of freedom, justice, and equality. One student who was at Convocation had this to say about the experience. It was everything that I stood for, you know, equality, justice for minorities, people of color. It just made me want to continue to be nonviolent and follow in the footsteps of his father. Due to large crowds, video feeds of King's speech were available in Kemper Recital Hall and Potter Hall Theater. An estimated 3,000 people were on campus for the event. Despite decreasing high school graduation rates, Missouri Western saw a 17.3% increase in freshman enrollment this semester. Under the direction of enrollment manager Paul Orson, the university placed a renewed emphasis on reaching out to students early and often. Orson says a 28% increase in campus visits played a significant role in raising enrollment. According to President Vardabedian, getting potential students on campus for events like convocation is also important for recruitment. However, the spike in enrollment has put a pinch on campus housing. There is currently no plan to build any new dorms. Residential Life Director Nathan Roberts says enrollment would have to continue growing as a trend for discussions to begin on expanding or building new housing. Changes may be coming to the way universities handle Title IX and sexual assault investigations. On September 7th, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos announced that the Education Department would be reviewing measures for how colleges investigate sexual assaults, with the possibility of removing some key regulations. This includes raising the level of burden of proof above the preponderance of evidence standard. No moves have yet been taken by DeVos to overturn any Obama-era recommendations. What any of those moves may be remains unclear. Declining attendance has forced the Western Activities Council to cancel the annual spring concert. The concert is being replaced with two smaller performances, one in the fall and one in the spring. WAC President Natalie Miller says splitting the concerts up will allow them to be held on campus instead of at the Civic Arena, where past spring concerts have been held. Miller says students should still expect great shows and encourages them to give feedback on potential artists. Past acts have included rapper Ludacris, country duo Maddie and Tay, and rock group X Ambassadors. It's still unknown where on campus the performances will be held. And there's been no escape from the summer heat in the classrooms of Murphy Hall. The building's air conditioning has not been working properly since before classes resumed. Two of Murphy's three compressors are not working properly, forcing the one remaining compressor to operate at full capacity. Fans placed near the outside doors have done little to cool the building's classrooms and offices. Several classes have been displaced by the heat. The faculty that work in the building say the air conditioning won't be working again properly until at least mid-October. While students may have been having a hard time keeping cool, they won't have a hard time finding something good to eat. Blum Union Food Court was renovated over the summer, adding Chick-fil-A to dining options on campus. The chain restaurant replaces Burger Studio and is the second Chick-fil-A location in St. Joseph. The renovations also brought new seating, lighting, and a new layout. And the renovations were part of a contract renewal between Airmark and Missouri Western. Administrators, Airmark employees, and students all agree that the new options and a fresh look are a good thing for the food court. I like the atmosphere to it. It feels a lot more spacious, helps everything go a lot more smoothly, a lot more fat quickly. Uh, the Chick-fil-A has been really nice. The Griffin Dining Hall across the corridor is also in the process of renovation. In addition, next summer, Java City will be replaced by a Starbucks. It's a new school year and with it comes a new student government. SGA has already held several weekly meetings this semester as newly elected members settle into their roles. Student body president Kyle Fusan says the year is already off to a good start, but they're still looking for help. We're forming our committees. Uh, the Capital Projects Committee is now being formed, so if a student's interested in contributing uh, their ideas to help improve uh, Missouri Western with certain projects, uh, they're more than happy to join that, even if they aren't affiliated with SGA. SGA meetings are held every Monday at 5 p.m. in Blum 220. The meetings are open to all students. For all these stories and more, be sure to pick up your copy of the Griffin News. And that's your news in five minutes. I'm Mary Beth Rosenauer. Thanks for joining us here on the Griffin Newscast. <music>
Thanks, Mary Beth. What a great addition to our lineup. Now, Mackenzie, what do you think of this? The moon levitates over the seas. <laughs> what are you doing? Giving you a snippet of the poem I wrote. I'm thinking about trying out for open mic. I bet you're thinking of the open mic night from last semester, featuring poetry written by women. Reporter Jasmine Taylor has the story. Covered some of the fine line with strong roots scratched against my palms. I don't like Creative it. writing is not often highlighted on Missouri Western's campus, but all of that changed with Hear Me Roar, a women's open mic. In honor of Women's History Month, women came together to celebrate womanhood by sharing poems and spoken word pieces they have written. Men were also able to participate, as long as they read poems by a woman. Hear Me Roar was one of many events hosted on Western's campus to recognize Women's History Month. Since 2013, the events and activities for Women's History Month have been organized by Dr. Melinda Kovach. And every year, the number of events continue to grow. In 2013, six different events and activities were held during the month of March. The number increased in 2016 to eight. The number of activities and events for Women's History Month increased for the year of 2017 with a total of 11 events being held. Student participation also continues to increase. Arnesia Johnson, Editor-in-Chief of Canvas, participated in sharing some of her work. Johnson, a double major in English Literature and Creative Writing and Publishing, read an original piece and enjoyed seeing her peers participate in an event dedicated to uplifting and celebrating women. I actually thought it was a beautiful environment, um, seeing women get up and men get up and really share poems and stuff. It was really emotional and it was really fun. I actually really enjoyed it. Hear Me Roar, organized by Dr. Marianne Kunkel, Assistant Professor of Creative Writing and Publishing, assisted students to bring the event together. Kunkel focused on the art aspect of this year's theme and formed an event that would not only uplift women, but also celebrate the art of creative writing. Um, there's not too many opportunities on campus to just celebrate the fact that people are creative, that they're expressive, that they're writing. Um, so I wanted it to feel much different than like a class workshop. Um, even we have a creative writing club which does great things. Um, but I didn't want student, I didn't want people to come tonight feeling like they were going to get constructive criticism. I just wanted them to feel like they would get a chance okay, to participate in a larger it. artistic okay, conversation. This is Jasmine Taylor reporting. Yes, thanks Jasmine. Now I can go improve my poem and maybe next time I can make it to the open mic session. Yeah, we might have a little more work to do on that poem of yours. <laughs> well, speaking of work, do you know who's one of the hardest workers I know? Our executive producer, Amari Martin. She went from being the first sports reporter and sports director on Griffin Update, and now she's running the entire show. Yeah, our boss is pretty cool. Hey, boss. <laughs> reporter Justin Gomez got to know her story. I really was kind of interested in news. But just knowing my strong passion, I love watching sports. I just knew that that's what I wanted to do, was cover sports. This is a Ryan Little production. It was my senior year of high school, and it was our homecoming week. And the homecoming week thing that week was ESPN. So I was a part of student council secretary and our vice president was supposed to be the host of our prep party that day and she got sick and she couldn't do it so they asked me last minute if I could go ahead and do it. So I'm like of course, I love talking, why not? So I did it and after that I remember walking off the stage and one of my teachers came up to me and he was like, hey Amora, you did a fantastic job, Like, I could so see you on TV doing this and from that day I knew that that's what I wanted to do in college. I have a lot of inspirations actually. I had an assignment that was due and I had to interview someone that worked in the journalism field and I will never forget the advice that she gave me. She told me that I, as long as I put my mind to it, then I can do it. I owe it to, first off, of course, to God, um, but my mom and my grandma. 
Those two women right there are my world. My mom has worked so hard to provide such a great life for me and my little sister. Um, if I didn't have my mom and my grandma always constantly on my back saying, Mara, you can do it, Mara, you're gonna make it, I honestly don't know where I would be. I was sitting in one of my classes and the girl asked me, in my class, she was like, hey, like, what's your major? I was like, sports broadcasting, but we, we don't have a sports broadcasting program. She was like, I think they're gonna have a Griffin Update show. Um, that covers all Missouri Western news, sports, everything you name it, if you reach out to Bob Knoll. And at this time, I didn't know who Knoll was. I was kind of like, well, let me just shoot him an email and see. So I remember I emailed him and I was like, hey, like I want to be on TV. I heard that you're coming up with a TV show on campus and I would love to join. He emailed me back. He was like, yeah, join this class and uh, you'll get gained some experience. I have the biggest Oklahoma accent. So when I was first in front of the camera, you could hear my Oklahoma accent so much and they'll put off like, Amari, if you don't fix that country accent. So at the end of the semester, uh, Noel reached out to me. He was like, hey, how would you feel to be the sports reporter for Griffin Update? When I tell you, I was so happy. Like, my heart was beating so fast. I was just so excited uh, to actually be one of the first up here to do that. So that's one of my memories I'll never forget here. so funny because she had this little Oklahoma accent and she was just this uh, kind of precocious young lady that worked her buns off and I was impressed right off the bat because she worked really 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 hard and not only that she knew her stuff and she was able to get in there and make connections with the sports teams and with the players and she really was devoted to what she wanted to do. And so I know what it takes, and my students have been successful doing it. She outstrips those students, just with her drive and ambition. And she's already getting calls from around the country because people see that this girl has polish. And, you know, color girl because she's like my little daughter. She and I have worked together so closely that she'll look to me after she's done. She goes, is that okay? Or, or what should I do fix or what should I fix and and we have what I call our, our father-daughter moments where I'll often go up at the end of the show and we'll be like this far apart and I'll just very quietly say okay you need to slow down you need to make sure that you know you're emphasizing this not emphasizing this this look good this needs to work you know those type of things and she comes back and the next time she does it. Do I have a ruler I do okay they are, they're five inch heels. That woman had on five inch heels today. I just, I don't know how she walks in them. She's not getting credit for it. She's not getting paid for it. She's doing it because she wants to be the best at what she does. And she works and does more work than most of the people that are getting credit for it and does a better job than a lot of people because she really cares. And that's what this is all about. If you want to become good in broadcast journalism because it is so competitive, you have to care. You have to want to improve your craft. And that's what she's all about. She wants to improve. She wants to get her name out there. And it's not an ego thing with her. It's a, I will be there because I'm going to work my hiney off to make sure I'm there. When she's on air, she's on. Stay tuned, Amari Mark TV is coming soon to a TV near you. We'll be right back with Bailey Ketchum and her sports report. One out of every four car accidents are caused by texting and driving. Wait, what did you just say? You heard me. That's better. Keep your eyes on the road. Welcome to Griffin Update Sports Report. 
your place to catch up on all Griffin sports. I'm your host, Bailey Ketchum. The fall sports have officially kicked off. First up, the new and improved football team kicked off the season on the road at Nebraska Kearney. The upset loss in week one motivated the Griffins to come back in week two to snag their first win of the season. In week three, the Griffins headed to central Missouri, but did not get the result they wanted. They're looking to bounce back in week four at home to face UCO. In other sports news, Griffin soccer is breaking barriers and making history. The Griffin soccer team is currently ranked 23rd in the nation. This is the first time in program's history. This week, the Griffs returned home with back-to-back -back games featuring Western's rival, Northwest Missouri State, and Lindenwood. Sports reporters Derek zimmerman Geyer and Morgan Doyle have more on the games. It may have been hashtag pack sprat, but the Griffin soccer team would pack the scoreboard as they defeated Northwest 4-0. I'm Derek Zimmerngeier. I'm here at Spratt Stadium. Missouri Western soccer team puts their 4-0 record on the line against the Bearcats. Freshman phenom Taylor Swarskoff will give the Griffs an early 1-0 lead eight minutes into the game with her fifth goal of the season. Fellow freshman Jordan Jennings will close out the first half with her first career goal, giving Western a 2-0 lead at the half. This pair of dogs would put on more of a show than the Bearcats offense did as senior Cindy Cluck would score nearly 63 minutes into the game, her third goal of the season. Junior Sarah Collins will close out the game with her first goal of the season, emphatically ending any chance of a Bearcat comeback. Senior Cassidy Minky, who is MIAA Offensive Player of the Week two weeks straight, would speak on the team's different attitude when Northwest comes to town. A little bit more energy than we usually do because our crosstown rivals and we always get a little more hyped up than we usually do for our regular games. Swartzkopf will give us a little insight on the key to her success in her inaugural season with the Griffs, as she's been an absolute offensive juggernaut for Western. It's been really great. I mean, I couldn't do it without my teammates, so without Coach Edwards and Tilly and everybody. But it's been a really good experience so far. After yet another dominating win, Missouri Western moves to 5 0 in the year and is now ranked 24th in the national rankings. Derek Zimmerman Geyer, Griffin Update Sports. After defeating rival Northwest, the Griffs look to keep their winning streak alive against Lindenwood. Cassidy Minky comes charging down the field in the first minute of the game, only to be blocked by the Lindenwood goalie. But the Griffins would soon try again on a corner kick, and Sarah Blakely would headbutt the ball into the net for the first Griffin goal of the game. Later in the first half, Minky would again come running down the open field, and this time shoot one right past the goalie to put Mo West up 2 to nothing going into halftime. And it looks like head coach Chad Edwards is pretty excited about that. In the second half, Minky strikes again and kicks a bullet into the top corner of the net. The Griffs would continue to play with that momentum for the rest of the game and score two more goals in the second half, this one here by Sidney Cluck. Mo West didn't allow the Lions to score the entire game for a final score of 5-0 to zero over Lindenwood. It felt really good. It felt really good. Last... Last year we had like the same kind of weather. We were coming off a Friday win, and we, like Coach says, we laid an egg, and so we were kind of building energy from that, and we came out and we did really well. This game was an important one for Cluck. Personally, like I was playing, I just lost a teammate from high school. I found out this morning, and so like I was playing for her, and it just felt really good. It was it was special. This one was. Oh, I think our team's just so special because we all want to be out here. We all want to work for each other. We all want to work for our coaches. And I think that's just what makes it so special, just wanting to play right now. Every single game we want to be out here. The Griffins are ranked 24th in the nation and improved to 6-0 on the season. Morgan Doyle, Griffin Update Sports. The Missouri Western student section was pretty hype at this game. Sports reporter Bo Baker was there to catch the moment. I'm Bo Baker alongside my man Jason Jones and Brian Hudson. And today I'm going to ask them what their prediction for the game is today between the Griffins and the Lindawood Lions. So Jason, what do you think the score is going to be at the end of the day? I got the Griffs A0. Brian, what about you? I got the Griffs 7 0. So, Jason, why 8 0? Because that's what I do, baby. I had a one up Brian, and I got faith in the Griffs. Brian, what about you? I definitely have faith in them, too. Now I'm saying it's 9 0 since I want to what up Jason. So, Lakota, what do you think the score of the game tonight is going to be? I'm going to say 6 0. Trudy, what about you? Uh, 5 0. What you thinking? 3 1. Oh, so you think they're going to get on the board? Yeah, I think so. The Griffs will head to Central Missouri in their next matchup. For more information on Griffin Athletics, check out GoGriffins.com. Thanks, Bailey. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. You can watch our show on MWSU TV Channel 12.
You can also catch us on the Griffin Update Vimeo and YouTube channels and the Missouri Western Student Media homepage. For all of us here at Griffin Update, thank you for watching. And check out this week's issue of the Griffin News.